Hey, Walter Sorrell's back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, the installation of my new CNC machine. So today, a reasonably quick video about the installation of my new Haas Mini Mill 2 CNC machine that obviously I'm making knives on. Now I've been using CNC milling in my knife making business for years, but this year I decided to step up to a more robust, capable machine uh, than the one that I've been using for the past few years. Now the first knife that I'm gonna be making on it will be this, which is my new Nightfall design. Um, I'm going to be making a whole series of videos about how I went about, you know, designing this and then bringing it out uh, as an actual manufacturable product. Um, if you're interested in seeing any of those vids, keep your eyes peeled. I'll be bringing those out in the next few weeks. I should also mention that if you're interested in buying one of them, they're available on tacticsarmory.com, which is my website for my production type knives. Now, I just did a video recently about how the riggers delivered the machine. Uh, this is a small machine by industrial standards, but it still weighs about 5,000 pounds. Really fascinating process. Link in the description if you want to check that out. Just to make the distinction here, delivery is actually physically delivering the machine, sitting down over there, and installation is making it so that, that machine is actually usable. You might think once the machine plops down on the ground, you're ready to rock. But no, installation is a more complicated process than that. First, you have to have both power and reliable compressed air. My buddy Dan Moynihan helped me install a nice compressed air system in my shop last year, so the air wasn't a big problem. I added a dryer filter on the end of the chain to make sure I wasn't getting wet, cruddy air into the machine. Power, a little more complicated. Normally CNC machines run on three-phase power. Now I'm in a residential slash agricultural kind of area, so no three-phase here. Now the documentation, sales guy, everybody said that the mini mill would run on single phase, but when the machine got here, the panel says three-phase. I'm not saying I panicked, but I might have panicked a little. Anyway, industrial machines like this don't come with a cord, so your electrician has to hook it up. Turns out, you just run two legs of 220 into the electrical system. According to the installation guide, everything's good to go. Runs on 220 single phase, 50 amp breaker, no sweat. Now, I'd heard that it wasn't unusual for it to take quite a while for Haas installers to show up, but by good fortune, my installer lives pretty close to me. I called on Monday to schedule the installation and the technician, Edgar, showed up next day. The way Haas works, all sales and tech support is done by what they call an HFO, which is an independent distributor. So Edgar works for Philips Corporation, the Haas HFO for this region, not directly for Haas. Anyway, Edgar basically spent the entire day on the installation. When the machine arrives, all the metal parts are covered with this cosmoline sort of shipping grease. The machine also has to be leveled, the spindle has to be run in, various other things. So, Edgar started by firing up the machine and running some diagnostics to make sure everything was running correctly. I wasn't sure how involved I would be, but basically, Edgar just cranked through his procedures while I worked. I didn't have to do anything at all. Now, having never owned an industrial-sized machine, Honestly, I was pretty nervous about the whole thing. I'd heard about people who'd ordered machines that showed up DOA and took a lot of work to get going. The Mini Mill 2 is small by high standards, but for me, it represents a really large investment. So I'm extremely eager to get the green light glowing and have knife parts coming out the front. Edgar went about his business very calmly, and as things developed, the whole process was completely smooth and unremarkable. As with most rotating equipment, there's a break-in procedure here, specifically for the spindle, the part of the machine that spins the tools. So the first thing he did was run that program, which went for about two hours. Basically, it just ramps up the spindle speed, kind of stair-stepping up and down, up and down, up and down, all the way up to the top speed. After that was done, he cleaned up the shipping goop from inside the enclosure. That's the blue stuff. As you can see here, there's a lot of it. Mm. 
Once that was done, the machine was leveled. This was done by placing a machinist level on table and then adjusting the legs of the mill until it's dead level. A machinist level is not your grandpa's carpenter level. Typically, they're accurate to something like a thousandth of an inch per foot, maybe even more than that. He had this pretty cool setup where he put a little camera on this gooseneck that he could monitor on his phone so he didn't have to go running back to the door the whole time to see his progress. I'm sure that sped up the leveling process a huge amount. Once that was done, he checked to make sure the spindle was square to the table. To do that, he put a dial test indicator on the spindle and then rotated the spindle. Pretty simple thing. That pretty much ate the entire morning. Real quick here, guys. If you've been enjoying all the free content I've been offering on YouTube for the past 15 years, yep, you heard that right. It's been almost 15 years now. And you want to get back to the channel, there's a way. It's called Patreon. All of my Patreon supporters at any pledge level get plans to most of my builds, plus other bonuses for higher pledge levels, plus you get the good feeling of helping out the channel. So help us help you. Link in the cards and description. Thanks, and now back to work. During the afternoon, he gave me a tutorial on the functions of the machine. Compared to my old machine, the Haas has a pretty complex and feature-rich system, as you'd expect from an industrial machine. You can track tool wear and just do all kinds of wacky stuff that I wasn't able to do on my older machine. At the same time, the system does a lot of things quite differently than my Tormach, my old CNC machine. Setting work and tool offsets, which is about as mission critical a thing as there is in CNC work, was very different than on my Tormach. It's not just different from a button pushing standpoint, but from a conceptual standpoint. Basically, in any CNC machine, there's this imaginary box in space defined by X, Y, and Z axes, front to back, left to right, up and down. Now the machine has to know where inside this space everything is really, really precisely. The tools, the spindle, the workpiece, everything. So if you set this wrong, the smashing and the grinding and the cursing and maybe even the crying starts. In my Tormach, you pretty much start by defining the length of the tools from the spindle nose. Then you set your zeros and you're good to go because wherever the spindle is, it knows the tool length. In the Haas, everything is defined from the home position, so, well, anyway, that's nerdy stuff that's probably boring to most people, but suffice it to say, different from what I do on the other machine, and it took me a little while to get that part of things through my skull. But, other than that, most of the stuff, reasonably simple and logical. Many thanks to Edgar from Phillips. He made the whole process easy and just really went above and beyond on the install. Like I said, I was pretty nervous about the install and you know, making sure that I wasn't gonna destroy the machine 10 minutes after he left. Um, but Edgar was you know, really, really helpful and, and just got me up and running with no fuss, no muss. And I felt pretty confident that I had you know, kind of the basics of operation more or less figured out. So uh, now that it's running, Time to make knives. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe and make sure that you click on that bell so you get notified of all the latest videos. Want to buy a knife from me? Check out my modern blades at tacticsarmory.com. Digging the channel? You can support our video making efforts on Patreon. You know, I've been banging away on these videos for like 10 years, so I hope you'll show some love for all that hard work. Link in the cards and descriptions. Finally, if you're interested in making Japanese swords, check out my full line of Japanese sword videos where I show how to forge Japanese swords as well as how to polish them and how to make fittings, handles, and scabbards. Walter Sorrel's Blades dot com.